Good evening guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I would take you with me to do a quick declutter of all of my perfume samples and decants. I just have been meaning to do this for quite a long time and I thought today was as good a day as ever to go through and decide if there were any decants or samples that were worth holding on to. I'm literally drowning in decants. I mean I think I have fewer than some other people have but it's still too many for me because they're literally just sitting there and I'm not using them. So yeah if you guys are interested then make yourself something to drink and hang out with me while I declutter all of my samples. All right, so I'm just sitting here in my office um, on a day off having a cup of coffee and looking at all my samples. I was doing a little bit of decluttering in my bedroom today. I decluttered some of my loungewear. Um, I took a look at my perfumes again. I even took a look at my handbags. I've just been really loving the um, process of minimizing and simplifying all over my whole house and I'm definitely gonna continue doing that today. Um, and I was going to do this off camera and at one point I almost just took it and put it away in the closet wasn't even going to worry about it because I thought this is too much. It's just going to take too much energy and too much time and I don't want to deal with it today. And part of me just wants to take all my samples slash decants and get rid of them. And the other part of me knows that I might regret getting rid of all my samples because I do have some, um, yes, come in. I do have some samples slash decants in here slash travel sprays that I may want to come back and revisit at some point in the future, but for the most part, most of these samples can go. So I thought I would just take you guys with me, have a quick cup of coffee and go through um, all of my samples and decide, you know, are there any samples that I want to hold on to that I've been on the fence about that I may want to come back and revisit or can I just get rid of all my samples? I'm not sure. By the way, if anybody wants any perfume samples, um, please write me over on Instagram and ask. I will like sell them all as a bunch. I would rather them all go together um, for like super cheap. I just kind of want them all to go and I don't really know what to do with them, but I know there's a lot of people out there who would love to sample you know, a lot of these fragrances that I have here. So I'm thinking to just whatever ones I don't keep, I'm thinking to just bunch all of them together and sell them as like a pack to whoever wants them for like, I don't know, 50, $75, something like that, just so that they go to a good home. I mean, I have well over, I probably have about, I would say 400, five, no, probably more than that, five or $600 worth of samples here. Um, but I just kind of like, yeah, between my royalty sense, my house of sillage, um, gift sets, my ones I've ordered online. Um, yeah, Joe Malone, like decants that I've ordered. I definitely have like probably about four or $500 worth of samples here, but I just kind of want them to go to to a good home. I don't want to throw them in the garbage. I feel like that's very wasteful, especially when I know there's people out there who would love to get their nose on some of these perfumes. So what I'm going to do is process of elimination. I'm just going to pull them out and one by one decide if it's something I want to keep or something I don't want to keep. And maybe I'll lend a couple of my thoughts about these fragrances as well as we go through. She always has to be part of everything that I'm doing. Don't you? Kitty, don't you? Hmm? So we have Tiziana Terenzi Talea. This is a beautiful fragrance that I have told you guys before. I really love the way that it smells and um, I don't want to not have this to play with because a few months down the road, I might want to try it again. So this I'm gonna hold on to. Not that I'm in the market to purchase it. Um, I'm really trying to avoid buying perfumes. It's just that I know myself and I know that you know, I might at some point want to try it again and I won't have it. So yeah, I'm just going to hold on to Talea. We'll put all the ones I wanna keep over here. Actually, maybe I should put the ones I wanna keep in this Joan Malone box. This one here is Borea from Tiziana Terenzi. Honestly, this is a beautiful scent, but I don't think I'm going to want to play with it. So I will put that over here. The ones I'm gonna declutter, I'll put here. This is Frank Boucle Cocaine. I'm not sure if I'm saying that properly. This one smells a lot like Tom Ford. Oh, that one that was discontinued, what the heck was it called? Tom Ford Orchid Soleil. It smells like Tom Ford Orchid Soleil, which I do like, but I don't love this enough that I would use it. So we will get rid of that one. Here we have um, Rosendo Mateo. Now this one, believe it or not, you guys, is a really beautiful scent. And um, sometimes I think I wouldn't mind trying it again. So yeah, it's kind of similar to Baby Cat, but it's a little bit on the sweeter side. I'm gonna hold on to that one. This one here is Lalique Gold. I do not like that one. Um, we have Lilabo Rose 31. 
I got this one from Royalty Sense because um, when I was in Vegas last time, I went to a Lilabo boutique and I actually tried Rose 31 and I thought it was really pretty, but now that I've had it for a little bit longer, I know that that's not one that I would reach for very often, so I'm just going to pass that one along. We also have Christian Dior Happy Hour. I don't like that one enough to try it again. It honestly just doesn't have very good longevity. It's a beautiful scent, but it doesn't last. Dior Eden Rock. Um, this one smells really nice, but not a favorite. It's very oceanic. This one is Oud and Bergamot from Jo Malone. I really like the way that this smells, but I'm not going to wear it, and my boyfriend doesn't particularly love that one, so we will let that one go. We have Boucheron, if I'm saying it properly, Plus Plas Vendome. I think I'm saying that properly. I'm not sure. This is actually, this is actually a very classy, beautiful scent. This would be a great signature scent. Is it something I love? I don't know. Uh, honestly, you guys, I can't see myself wanting to play with that one again, so we will get rid of that one. We have Maison Margiela Beach Walk. This is a nice one, but it is too, um, too salty for me, too, too salty ocean water. We have Hale Bop from uh, Tiziana Trenzi. This one, this is a beautiful scent. Very, very sexy and sophisticated, but not for me. So I'm gonna pass on this decant. By the way, if you guys are wondering, this is like, I think this is at least a five mil, but it could be more than that. It could be like an eight mil of uh, these Max Aroma fragrances. Now, what do we do about House of Siage? Okay. So House of Siage. Okay, to be honest, with House of Siage, I'm not a huge fan of most of their Whispers collection, um, with the exception of Whispers of Truth, wherever that is. Whispers of Truth is very nice. Um, this must be it here. Yeah, Whispers of Truth. This one's very nice. This one smells like um, a mix between Baccarat Rouge and Delina. It's a beautiful fragrance. It would be a good signature scent. Um, and also I was going to do a review of all of these on my channel. I haven't gotten around to doing that yet. I don't know if I will. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about that one, but Whispers of Truth is one I would not mind coming back to. I really like a lot of House of Siage fragrances. It's just that they don't all, some of them have incredible performance. Some of them don't. You guys know my favorite one is Tiara, which I have a full bottle of, and that is part of their signature line. Um, also, I really like, I like Cherry Garden. I like Benevolence. That's actually the one that's missing out of here is Benevolence because I have that sitting with my other perfumes. I've been wearing it. I really like it. Passion de l'Amour is really nice. Haute Bijou is beautiful. Um, so I actually really like a lot of the House of Siage. I feel like I don't think I quite want to let go of them yet because maybe I'll do a video about them in the future or maybe I'll come back and want to revisit. Like House of Siage is difficult to get where I live. I don't live near a House of Siage counter. So I feel like these ones are ones I should hold on to for now. Um, perhaps at some point in time, I will, I will let them go, but I feel like, you know, they're hard to get where I live. So I'm just going to hold on to them because I do think that they're really beautiful, really good quality fragrances. I love the way that a lot of them smell. They're very classy. They're very unique. Um, so I'm going to hold on to those house of siage when it comes to the whispers in the garden noir i really did not like any of these noir fragrances um none of them spoke to me so i'm going to pass that whole whispers in the garden and if you guys are wondering it's whispers of temptation seduction enchantment and truth noir should we try truth noir i wonder if how different that is from the original i just sprayed whispers of truth noir here let's actually just see because the original one's nice. Hmm, honestly, it's not that different from the original. Yeah, I can let that one go. That one's not a favorite. Actually, the original Whispers of Truth is not, like, I'm not obsessed with that one, to be honest. It's just nice. It's nice, and it's one I wouldn't mind revisiting, but yeah, the whole Whispers of Truth noir, none of these really jumped out at me, so those are gonna go. I mean, so already right here, I've got, like, 50, 100, like two, 200. This is like $200 worth of perfumes right here just in these samples because royalty cents, um, it ends up costing about $45 a month to get two of them. But anyway, all right. So let's not think about how much money we've wasted on perfume samples, okay? All right, um, let's see here. So we have Nishane Fan Your Flames. Now this one's beautiful, but not for me, too masculine. Um, 
a really, really intoxicating fragrance, but I will not miss that one. Uh, we have Chanel Beige. Ooh, she's a beauty. She's a beauty. Do I necessarily want to run out and buy a whole bottle of Chanel Beige? Not at this point in time, but I wouldn't mind revisiting her. So yeah, Chanel Beige is just like, I mean, and I'm a huge Chanel fan. Like I would love to have a ton of Chanel. I love Chanel so much. So yeah, totally suits my vibes. I'm definitely going to hold on to that, that sample. Chanel Beige is gorgeous, you guys. We have Tiffany Rose Gold. Honestly, no. Um, I've tried this before. I've smelled it in store many times. I've put it on skin. Um, not going to keep Tiffany Rose Gold. Zerjoff 1861 Naxos. This is a beautiful one and actually, sorry guys, I'm not in focus. This is a beautiful one and actually my boyfriend likes it. I'm going to hold on to this one because Zerjoff is expensive and this is a stunning fragrance. Hold on to that one for now. Maison Francis Kirk John Oud Satin Mood. Um, honestly, I have tried this fragrance uh, plenty of times and it doesn't quite work for me. It is a beautiful fragrance, but it's not one that's impossible for me to smell again. I can very easily smell this in store. Um, so I'm going to just put that to the side. What is this one? This is a uh, Spirito Fiorentino from Tiziana Trenzi from Royalty Scents. Um, it's still full. It's it's kind of similar to Baccarat Rouge, but it has like a leather touch to it. I will not be using that one. I have a decant here that a friend sent me, light blue intense. Will not be needing that one. We have a Nick for, I actually have a whole bunch of uh, samples from a Nick, a Nick, <laughs> I'm not sure how you say it in here. And uh, none of them, or Annika, I don't know how you say that. Oh, <laughs> never mind. These are eight and Bob. What am I talking about? I don't see, I don't even know what I'm talking about, but I will not be, I will not be needing those. Here's some more that are from Eight and Bob, Anique 5. This one, Anique 5, is actually good. This is like a boozy, um, this is like a boozy, a boozy, sweet, really nice. It's actually a really, really nice one, but it's also leaking. This one should just go in the garbage because it's leaking all over the place. Um, there's another Eight and Bob. We have uh, Parfums de Marley Herod. This one is gorgeous. Uh, Parfums de Marley Herod is gorgeous, but not for me. So you have to be able to know, like, just because something is good doesn't mean you have to keep it. You know, if it's not right for you and if you don't think you're ever going to wear it, like, I've had that sample for like two years. What am I doing with it? You know, um, Soradora. These can all go. Um, none of the Soradoras were for me. So let's just pick out all of our. Doris. Um, we have Tom Ford Vinny Fatal. This sample is literally three years old. It still smells pretty much like it's supposed to smell, but yeah, this is one I was toying with for a long time. It's a beautiful fragrance, but I just don't think I will ever actually own a bottle, and I don't think I need that sample. Here we have a whole bunch of decants from The Harmonist, as well as a few from Lucky Scent that I purchased. We have the next to see a couple from Welton. Um, hypnotizing fire, um, sun force. You know what I think about the Harmonist? I think they're beautiful, but I think they're very overpriced. Like they could probably be a good $50 cheaper at least than what they are, especially yin transformation. You know, I wouldn't mind trying something like yin transformation again, just because it was like a very easy, likable daily, like everyday kind of reach. Should I keep these ones so I can like come back and revisit them or talk about them? Okay, honestly, you guys, Yen Transformation Eau de Parfum is actually very beautiful. I have the Eau de Parfum and I have the Parfum. Um, I think I like Eau de Parfum better, just the way it smells. Um, yeah, they're they're pretty. I wouldn't mind revisiting um, the Eau de Parfum Yen Transformation. So I think I'll hold on to that one. Sun Force is really nice, but I think very masculine. But I, I don't think it's something my boyfriend would be into. So I think I'm going to pass on Sun Force. Um, and then Yin Transformation Parfum. I think I'm going to pass Yin Transformation Parfum on as well. And then we have, I think, Hypnotizing Fire. Yeah, Hypnotizing Fire is um, really nice. Yeah, I don't have the notes in front of me. But it's really nice. It's kind of like a spicy, um, sweet... Is there a rose in there? It's reminding me of something. I don't know. That's a nice one, but 
what are the chances I would, honestly, it's not for me, I don't think. Um, if I ever want to go back and re-smell it at a boutique, I can always do that, but I don't think hypnotizing fire is for me. I don't know if you guys want me to do full reviews on any of these, but I don't think hypnotizing fire is for me. And like I told you guys, I don't want to do videos on stuff that I'm not motivated to talk about. So I think we're going to let go of hypnotizing fire. And then here's just a whole bunch of like random samples that I got from Scent Split or Lucky Scent, like Vicious Cacao, Venextasy. Yeah. Honestly, you guys, like so many of these. Delice from Stefan de Bruin. I don't know if I'm saying that properly. Magnificat. Uh, this one's actually good. Vicanto Magnificat. That one's actually good. Um, Walton London Secret Amber. You guys, Secret Amber from Walton London is actually very, very sexy. That's a really good one. Like, I think I put these ones in here because they were ones I wanted to do videos on. Um, so that's why they're in there. Secret Amber is nice. You know, I, should I keep any of these so I could actually do videos on them? I feel like Secret Amber is a good one. I, I really liked Secret Amber. I'm going to put that one in there. And then none of the other ones here really jumped out at me. Um, yeah, I think I'll let go of all those ones. Okay, where to go now? So we have a sample of a trap rev. Don't need that. I've owned that like 10 times already. A Delina exclusive. Don't need that. See, there's like really good samples in here, you guys. Um, Matterai from Memo Paris. I didn't care for that one. Um, Killian Black Phantom. Black Phantom is good, but not something that I think I am going to revisit anytime soon. Uh, Moonlight in Heaven, Killian Moonlight in Heaven, that's a nice one. We'll hold on to that one. Cacao Porcelana. Okay, Cacao Porcelana, this one got hype for a while. Uh, I think save your money. That's my personal thoughts. I wonder if I should do a video on this one. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll hold on to this one and actually talk about it um, because it did get a lot of hype, but I don't know. Should I hold on to that one? I'm not sure what to do with that one. This, this is one that I wouldn't mind. I mean, I would never buy it for myself, but... Maybe I should do a video about, about that one. Maybe we'll hold on to that one for now. Um, what else? Maison Tahiti Floranilla. This one's actually a really nice vanilla if you like floral vanilla fragrances. If you like something like, if you like a uh, vanilla. Is that what it's called? Mazzari? Vanilla? Anyway, if you like that kind of vanilla scent, you would like um, Floranilla. I'm actually going to hold on to that one. It's a really pretty vanilla, vanilla that I might want to come back and revisit. What is this? One umbrella for two. Oh, you guys. One umbrella for two. This smells like blueberry muffins, but like why Why do I want to smell like blueberry muffins? Yeah, I, I was not impressed with the one umbrella for two. Not in the slightest. That was one that got like a lot of hype, but because it was interesting and unique, but not that you want to smell like that. Like, yeah. Ilha Domel. Don't know how to say that. That's memo. Not interested. Smelled it. Didn't like it. Uh, bond number nine, New York nights. Too much like banana bread. Honestly, it smells too much like banana bread for me. Cannot do it. What the heck? Cashmere from Vicanto. That one's actually nice, but I'm never going to, I'm never going to use it. Uh, Brooklyn LSB. This is a really nice one, um, but I will never want a bottle for myself. Majena Sin from the different company. That one was actually nice, but not for me. Uh, Baccarat Rouge 540. <laughs> no, I don't need a sample of that one. My goodness. What am I doing with a sample of that one? Soradora. Another Eight and Bob. Another Soradora. Essential Parfums Divine Vini. Uh, maybe I'll hold on to, should I, should I hold on to that one? I don't know. Nah, let's start that one go. I don't think I need that one. Vanilla Diorama. This actually smells really, really good, but it is not for me. Um, it smells beautiful, but it's not, I will never have a bottle of that. Uh, what else? Honor, Honora Delights. Not sure what that even is, but not for me. Smelled it, didn't care for it. So Ardora. Um, Mephisto from Zerzhov. Uh, this one is nice, but it's too fresh. It's kind of like a citrusy fresh iris. It's very nice, but it's not my style. It's good if you like something soft and fresh. Memo Paris Sintra. This is a big fat no for me. I've tried it so many times, including today. I actually put it on my arm again today. And this one's just a no. Honestly, you guys, when it comes to the whole orange blossom and neroli thing, I prefer benevolence. Benevolence from House of Siage is my like orange blossom neroli vibe. All right, you guys, um, here, what the heck is all this? These are scent, um, fragrances samples that I ordered from, 
I think, etiquette, perhaps. And there's some really good ones in here. Ombre Cashmere Intense from Nikolai, uh, Welton, London, I don't even know how to say that. Like, there's some good ones in here. There's some, like, nice ones in here. What the heck is this? Magnolia a Pivoine, something or other. I don't know. There's some good ones in here um, that I just will never... I think I kept these with the intention that I would talk about them, but I just don't want to, and I don't I don't like any of them enough to get a bottle, so that's why they're there. What is this? Diptyque a Rose, and that is a beautiful rose scent. It's a really nice, realistic, pretty rose. You know, I'm going to hold on to that because I like clean fragrances and that's a good clean one um killian intoxicated gorgeous but not for me you know in hindsight i should have had these all dumped out and be putting them back in here because they're gonna all fall off of there <laughs> here we have another bunch of samples from etiquette and i kept these thinking i would want to talk about them um, but I don't think I'm actually going to oh my gosh I have Jovoy Fire at Will Memo Sintra so my second sample of Memo Sintra Mazzolari Vanilla Oud for Greatness uh, yeah what am I doing with all these uh, Manakara yeah what am I doing with all these um, I think the only one out of here I will keep is Mazzolari Vanilla because I actually really like that fragrance and that's one that I could see myself possibly in the future owning all right so all of these samples Oud for Greatness, Fire at Will, Manakara, uh, Silky, Silky Woods from Goldfield and Banks all of those are gonna go didn't like uh, Silky Woods by the way I mean it was nice but it wasn't for me Okay, my gosh, there's just so many. I don't even know what to do with all these. So Maison Francis Kirk John Feminine Pluriel. I like MFK. I'm going to hold on to that one because uh, MFK makes some pretty nice fragrances. We have another Eight and Bob there. Um, Zerzhov Overture. This is a sexy, sexy fragrance. It's sexy, but it's not for me. Like, I'm never going to own this. I'm never going to, I'm never going to own this. So yeah, we'll just let that go. Um, this was a commodity, no, sorry, this is Chanel Chance ADP, which I now have a bottle of, and this is actually empty. I wore through the entire thing, so this actually has to go in the garbage. Um, what else do we have? Sor another Soradora. Kerosene Sweetly Known. Oh, Kerosene Sweetly Known. We had a brief love affair, didn't we? So I don't need that one. Alien Goddess. Alien Goddess. Good Girl gone bad extreme good girl gone bad extreme how are you you're pretty you are pretty a very pretty floral fragrance i'm gonna hold on to good girl gone bad extreme um not that i think it's really up my alley but it's a nice one i may want to come back to it at some point tamarindo no etiquette uh parfum de marley ojan uh that one was nice but not for me Bond number nine, Scent of Peace. That, that was a pretty, very pretty, light, everyday wearable fragrance. I think that you can get a similar vibe for cheaper, but it is really nice. And I'm going to hold on to that one because I actually enjoyed that one. Parfum de Marly Meliora. I'm going to hold on to this one because it's kind of like a shampooy, fruity fragrance. I wouldn't mind coming back and revisiting that one. Eight and Bob. Um, what is this? Maze and Sear Luxury. That is a pretty fragrance. That is um, like a powdery, clean, hotel linen, fresh, uh, soapy. Very pretty. Gonna hold on to that one. What is this? Uh, mm. This is material from uh, Amouage. This has to go in the garbage, actually, because it's leaking. Um, Parfum de Marley Safinade. No, that one's too yellow floral for me. Insulo Jeroboam, that can go. Hermetica, no, that can go. Alien O Extraordinaire, nope, that can go. Guerlain Musk Outre Blanc, no, tried that one. It was nice, but it's not for me. Mm. Le Jour Celeve Louis Vuitton, nope, that can go. Uh, Radical Rose, that's a pretty one. Radical Rose from Matière Premier. This is a stunning, stunning rose fragrance, but not for me, but it's very beautiful. One of the nicest roses I've ever smelled. Royal Crown Sultan, ooh. She's, she's a bad one. I mean, she's a good one, but <laughs> you know what I mean. What else do we have here? Tamine Petialia, ooh, Petiala, Petiala. Okay, this one's gorgeous, Tamine Petiala. I'm not sure if I'm saying that properly. One of the nicest florals I've ever smelled. I'm going to hold on to that one. Might do a video on it. 
another Soradora. Um, honestly, you guys, when it comes to Soradora, they have some incredible fragrances. None that are 100% for me, but they have some really nice ones. Um, it just depends on your taste. The Harmonist Velvet Fire, no. This is a little tiny sample of Creed for her, Creed Aventus. I cannot stand this fragrance. Like, I dislike this fragrance with a passion. It gives me a headache. I can't stand it. Um, what else? Bond number nine, Madison Avenue. Madison Avenue's a uh, beautiful, beautiful. I'm gonna hold on to that one. Initio, Psychedelic Love. Nope, don't need that sample because I have a bottle. Young Rose by Rado. That one's pretty. Um, that one's pretty, but I don't think for me. And Halligan's Halfetti, gorgeous, but not for me. I have a little uh, sample of Miss Dior Cherie 2005. This is beautiful, but this is not, um, I mean, obviously I can't get a bottle. It was nice to have smelled it, so I'm grateful because actually a subscriber sent that to me, but yeah. What else do we have here? BDK Parfums, Passe Soir. Hmm, Passe Soir, you guys, no. No, no, no. I don't know why you would mix pepper and fruit. It's a no. <laughs> it's a no from me. BDK, Bouquet de Angry. Beautiful, smells too much like Chanel Chanso Tendre. Uh, Amorous Femme, definitely gonna keep this. MFK, beautiful, feminine fragrances. Um, Zerjoff, Ivory Root. No, we do not need that sample. Etiquette, um, what the heck is this? Bois Dachai. I don't even know, I don't even remember what that smelled like. The Harmonist Matrix Metal, no. Another Soradora. The Harmonist Hypnotizing Fire, another Hypnotizing Fire. Parfum de Marly, Oriana. You know, we're gonna hold on to Oriana. This was a beautiful orange blossom and I've been really liking Benevolence from uh, House of Siage, like I said, and if for some reason I can't find a bottle of Benevolence at a good price, I wouldn't mind bringing back a sweet orange blossom at some point, so I'm gonna hold on to Oriana. That's actually a beautiful fragrance. Um, Replica. Maison Margiela, Autumn Vibes. You know, I like Autumn Vibes for a man, and it also smells like a candle to me, but I don't need to keep the sample because you can smell it in any Sephora, so. Um, what else do we have? Another Soradora, my gosh, does it ever end? Fun Fair Evening, oh, a friend sent this to me uh, to sample. This is really nice if anybody wants to try Fun Fair Evening and get a whiff of it for yourself. Very pretty scent. Um, what is this? Killian Apple Brandy, no. Hard no, that's a hard no. Um, Cacao Libertine, Maison Tahite. This is just another random gourmand that did not work. I feel like so many of the gourmand, um, random like little gourmand fragrances that these companies have come out with, they just all smell like a different variation of chocolate and vanilla. It's like, how much can you possibly have? You know what I mean? Plus I like when something smells a little bit perfumey. How cute is this coffee cup, by the way, you guys? I got this from Bloom. People always ask where I got it from. It's from Bloom. It looks like a little Michelin man. <laughs> I like it. All right, we are narrowing in on the end, you guys. Scent Sacred Groove, House of Oud. That was a no. Can't even remember what it smelled like, so it couldn't have been that special. Sapphire Blue, House of Oud, also a no. Look at all these samples, you guys. I literally spent money on these. Sugar from Frank Bouclé. Oh, so... Okay, he's got cocaine and sugar, so I don't remember what that one smelled like, but I don't think I cared for it too much. Uh, Tamine Peregrina. Oh, she's a lovely, lovely girl. You guys know how much I loved Peregrina when I first smelled it. I ended up not keeping it. You know what I'm finding out is that myrrh, like the note of myrrh, even though it's beautiful, does not work for me. I always end up letting go of fragrances that have a lot of myrrh. It's like it's too heavy and powdery for me or something. I don't know. Beautiful scent though, but it just did not did not work out in the end. Uh, Libertine Fin de something or other? No, don't even, don't even know what that is. Another Mozzolari Vanilla, so I have two of them. Um, I should let one of them go. I should let one of them go because I'm sure somebody out there wants to smell it. And they're both like pretty full. They're both exactly the same. So I'll keep one and I'll, I'll put one in the little gift pack here. Guerlain Angelique Noir. Oh, she's a beauty. She's a beauty. I will keep my sample of Angelique Noir because I would love to have a bottle of that one day. Such a pretty fragrance. Couleur Vanille. I had like a brief love affair with Cleur Vanille. Um, this one from L'Artisan Parfumer, this one is a beautiful vanilla fragrance, but it does have a bit of a beachy, uh, salty ocean water 
essence that I do not care for on my skin. It is not good for me. So chlorophyll is gorgeous, but not for me. Uh, what did I decide about Good Girl Bad? Good Girl Gone Bad Extreme. We'll keep that one. Humbert Lucas Sand Dance. Okay, I was gonna do videos on the Stefan Humbert Lucas fragrances, and I feel like I still should because God of Fire is so hyped up. Um, I don't like any of them that much. Like to be honest, you know what? Maybe I'll just tell you in this video. In my opinion, the Stefan Humbert Lucas fragrances are really hyped up and not worth the hype. Sand Dance is a really nice, like, woody fragrance, um, but there's something in it that rubs my nose the wrong way. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Bottega Veneta, um, just the original Bottega Veneta. There's, I think it's oak moss or something. There is something, it's like oak moss and leather. There's something in here that just makes me instant nauseated. Sand Dance is a no. It is a no. Um, Stefan Humbert Lucas Venom Incarnate. You want to know what this is? This is an expensive raspberry lipstick. It's a very, very overpriced raspberry lipstick. You would be better off getting um, Lipstick Fever from Juliet Has a Gun. Absolutely Blooming from Miss Dior. Now, Absolutely Blooming from, from Dior. Now, that is a beautiful fragrance. That's your raspberry, your iris, your patchouli, your slight, your subtle floral components, your pink pepper. It's romantic. It's sexy. It's feminine. The price is right. Um, except I hear it's going to be discontinued, but Venom Incarnate is like a very overpriced iris raspberry lipstick. Like nothing special, just nothing special. Queer Zerzura, uh, I don't remember. I wouldn't mind revisiting Queer Zerzura from Armani because I like Armani a lot. Uh, what is this? Sticky Fingers, oh man. Sticky Fingers was hyped up. Didn't like it, didn't like it. It's like too, I think it was too woody or something. Reminded me a little bit of Whiff of Waffle Cone from Imaginary Authors. The Harmonist Sun Force, another Sun Force. We do, why do I have doubles of perfumes I don't even like? That's a good question. Montel Vanilla Cake, no. Too sweet. Uh, Oud for Greatness, another Oud for Greatness. Oh, this one's almost empty. That one's almost empty, so that one can go in the garbage. Cacao 2 from Maison Tahite, no. Oud in Bourbon from Sense of Wood. That one's actually really good, but not for me. It's a really beautiful, like, uh, boozy fragrance. What is this? Vinny Havan, uh, no. <laughs> Can't remember what that one, that one was like a tobacco. I think that was a tobacco fragrance. White Madeira from Omnia Perfume, Profumi. This was good, but not for me. Uh, Strychnina Vicanto, um, this, you know, Strychnina was actually gorgeous. It, I think this is a boozy fragrance, like a boozy vanilla. That one's actually beautiful, but not, not for me. I don't know how to say that. <laughs> what else do we have here? Diptyque Eau Duel EDP. EDP. Do I want to keep it? Yeah, why not? I like, I like uh, Diptyque. Maison Francis Kershaw Gentle Fluidity Gold. You know, I no, 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 no. I've tried this one way too many times. It's a gorgeous fragrance, but I just know it doesn't work for me. It gives me a bit of a headache. It's too strong. Secret Tryst. Oh man, you guys, if you want to talk about a beautiful, like vanillic woody fragrance, Secret Tryst is amazing. This one reminds me a lot of Bouquet Ideal from Zerzhov. So good, you guys. I'm definitely holding on to that one. Not that I want to spend like $600 on a fragrance Dubois fragrance, but if I ever have the opportunity to own a secret tryst, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Except right now, like I say, I'm not in perfume purchasing mode. I am not in like perfume hunting mode. I'm not on the hunt at the moment at all. What is this? Uh, God of Fire. <laughs> Isn't it ironic that it's the last one I pull out of the basket? And this is also the most hyped up one of like 2022, I would say. It's okay. It's okay. It's a really beautiful, realistic, fruity fragrance. Um, I believe, is it mango that's in this one? It's a beautiful, delicious, ripe mango with a little undertone of like some vanillic. I think there's like an undertone of a vanillic quality. It's long lasting. It's vibrant. It's fruity. It's juicy. It's mouth watering, but like, so is an actual mango. Like I don't want to smell like a mango. So for me, this one was just not it. Um, this one was just not it. But if you, if anyone wants to try it, here you go. You've got the three most hyped up <laughs> Stefan Humbert Lucas fragrances right there. 
Okay, now we've got a few here I kept to the side, and I feel like these were ones I wanted to talk about, or were these ones I did not like? Welton London, L'Amour Absolute, upper 10 for her. You know, actually some of these were good. Uh, Vinnie Benjoin. Okay, I think I kept these ones to the side because I thought they were nice and wanted to talk about them. I'm kind of annoyed that I spent all the money on these samples because I'm not gonna end up owning them. Okay, you guys, so those are my decluttered samples. My stomach is growling, I have to go eat something. Um, but these are the ones I'm gonna keep, not very many. So these are all the samples that I either want to revisit or there's some in here that I think potentially one day I could want a bottle of and I just wouldn't mind coming back and smelling them again. Not that I want a bottle of all those, but they're just ones that I feel like I'll regret if I don't have a sample. I will want to come back and smell them. So that's pretty good. I got rid of most of my samples. Um, and then I have my House of Siage, which I'm just not done yet, not done with yet. I wouldn't mind making videos reviewing some of those fragrances because I know they're, some of them are pretty hyped up and um, I think that House of Siage has really beautiful fragrances. And then these are the three that have to be thrown out for one reason or the other. And these are all the samples that I'm going to be parting ways with. So yeah, um, if anybody wants all of these perfume samples, um, I'm not gonna post them for sale, like on Poshmark or anything, but if anybody wants them, please just write me. I'm just pretty much gonna go in order of like first come, first serve. Uh, if you want them all, I will lovingly ship them off to you for like a pretty cheap price. I just kind of want them to go. And um, yeah, so please let me know if anyone's interested in all of those samples. And that's pretty much it for today's video. So sorry that it wasn't too exciting, just like a random sit down and declutter with me, um, but hopefully you enjoyed it.